Liechtenstein is a country, Cooper, which I think places it a little bit more, a little bit higher in the totem pole than being. Yeah, it's a it's a country, but it's like what? It's like twenty five square kilometers. <laughs> it's still country. You know what the uh, the average uh, number of popes in Vatican City is? I mean, per square mile. Oh, okay. I said to say average of what? <laughs> Because there's average is one if it's just the average. We're going around is like, what, like six or something? Mm. It's like 2.14 because the Vatican City is not a square mile. Yeah, it's so, it's so small. Mm-hmm. You've been doing anything fun today? Pretty chill day today. Pretty chill. Did some cooking. Um, some chores. You know, I'll be going home for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, just getting for ready the holidays. For that. Oh, shit. Sorry, continue. I accident. I had. I opened up the stream to make sure it was working and it wasn't muted. Um. Oh yeah. So basically, just getting geared up for Christmas next weekend. It doesn't feel like it's going to be Christmas. It's it's in literally less than a week. I know. It just got cold here like yesterday. Also, just got cold here yesterday. It was sixty degrees like for most of the week. I think you even got up close to 70 one day. In a warm winter. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't done anything. I I, uh, I did dishes, cooked. I got my food, my dinner, prepping upstairs. Um, I wanted to have a little snack that... that uh, That's been serious dinner. Cheetos, that big pot of hot Cheetos, Cheetos mac, and mac and cheese, right? Cheese. Holy crap. That stuff was horrible. Yeah, it's, you didn't strike me as the target audience for that. Well, I I had a coupon, so it was like forty cents or something. So I'm like, I'll try it. <laughs> uh, Only you would buy something that you would absolutely hate just to save forty cents. No, no, no. I had a, the box was forty cents or something like that. It was very cheap, oh. is what I'm saying. So I'm like, you know what? I'll try this for less than a dollar. It could be really good. It was not. It first of all, it smelled. It was like it smelled sweet. It like had the sickly sweet and the. They called for like two tablespoons of butter, which I'm like, I don't normally, I mean, to be fair, normal mac and cheese calls for fucking four tablespoons of butter, but I only ever put one into that. Um, I was like, you well, know what? That's- it's my first time making it. I'll follow the instructions on the box. And holy crap, was it awful. You didn't like your buttered Cheetos? It was just it. There was more butter than anything else. And it the this, the the sauce was it smelled sweet and it made way too much sauce. And it just, oh, I had like two bites and then I dumped it into a Ziploc and threw it away. Ugh. See, it only cost you 40 cents, but the time requirement and the butter requirement. Yeah, butter. No, I don't care about that. But it was the fact, it was like, it could have been really good, you know? It's like, oh, you know, maybe it's good. Nope. 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 Not good. Not good at all. I guess, I guess nothing ventured. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. And I, I, I had a couple of bites, and I just put the. It was, it was just bad. The worst part was the smell. The worst part for the, um, the funny farm fucking goat cheese mac and cheese I had before was the taste. It was just not good. Um, but it was just like a little off. Thinking about it now, I think the, the Cheetos mac and cheese was way worse than the funny farm. Because the funny <laughs> farm, I, I didn't throw that away because I was so upset because I was like, I wanted this to be good. Um, and I, that night I, I was drinking. So when I was a little bit drunk, I came back upstairs and finished it <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. I made it my normal way with that. So it had extra cheddar and a little extra melted cheddar cheese in it. So it wasn't just straight. It's been a while since I've had a uh, mac and cheese every, every Saturday for me. That's your Saturday, your Saturday's mac and cheese Saturday days? dinner. Yeah. They had uh they had the shapes on sale this week, so I got some unicorns. The shapes just taste better. It's just a fact. There's something different with your mic. Uh, shouldn't be. Oh, so it just sounds a little plasticky. I don't I don't know how to put it. Hmm. Plasticky. Let me uh, let me listen. Like there's a slight stream. Uh, Maybe I'm just imagining. Like there's a slight, like there's a slight, stream, slight uh, like crinkle to your voice or something. I mean, I got a little bit of. I just ate an orange, so I got a little bit of phlegm. <laughs> I 
trying to say like you have like orange feel in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's just my imagination. I, I mean, I listen to it on stream and it sounds the same as ever. Is your okay. speakers going or something? Maybe it's just me. You caught me, Cooper. You remember uh, Santa Claus 2 where they made the toy what? version of Santa? With Tim Allen? Yeah, yes. that's, that's what happened to me. I'm the toy Dude. version. <laughs> That's why I sound flashy. <laughs> why would someone do that? I don't know. What, what, what would they gain? I was turned up a little bit too loud on stream, though, so let me fix that. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's that's a bit better. We were peaking a little bit. You want to get into it, then? Uh yeah, let's do it. You got the you got the stream up. I want you to see this. I'm pretty happy with how this how this. I I have I have I have the stream up. Okay. So hello everyone and welcome back to the Audio Shop podcast. Uh, this week we are doing White Christmas by Bing Crosby. Um, after the not great fun time that was uh Mr. Bubbly last week, we decided to go with the the true classic. And as you can see, he's currently slowly scrolling upwards on the screen. Infinite, right infinite being. <laughs> this is just an OBS effect because I wanted to make him like bob up and down like the music notes, right? But it yeah. turns out you can just make images scroll. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I, I, I quite like the effect. Yeah. It just every, <laughs> my favorite is when he peeks his little, little eyes up over the bottom there. <laughs> like, Boop, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Just staring at you. 200,000 bings with a million more on the way. I think this is a pretty good slow pace. You can turn it way up. Like here, if I go in there and um, properties, oh no, not properties, it's uh, filters. You can turn it so it's at 40 right now and you can fucking, <laughs> you can wang that bad boy. Oh, right it's going to give me like motion sickness. <laughs> he, just, he, he goes. <laughs> uh, I think we need the slow bing. I think that's I uh, faster. I didn't. I didn't test this before. You can overblock. Uh, no, Five hundred is the minimum, or the maximum, rather. So yeah, we'll just have him. And I, I keep the stream up, Cooper, because I have a couple of images, um, some some uh, images to help us in our oh, in our talk. Okay. Mainly me. That's always nice. But I'll, I'll stop oh. talking and let you get into it. Yeah. Well, we're kind of. This is kind of a sequel podcast, if you will, to last week's, um, in which we re uh, reviewed Michael Bublé's uh, Christmas album. And now we're doing Bing Cosby's Christmas album, White Christmas. Uh, Harris Lillis Crosby Jr., a.k.a. Bing, born 1903, died 1977, and a very famous American singer and actor. He's like the first big American multimedia star, you know, with the uh, giant song hits but also a very lucrative uh, film career as well he uh, made over 70 films and recorded over 1600 songs sam that is this a man, lot of songs this this man kept busy um his kind of recording styles and innovations were kind of uh, influenced by many future artists, you know, notably the Sinatra's and the Dean Martin's and the Elvis Presley's. Um, so in, in a way he was like the, like original, like, uh, I guess male superstar, um, or at least one that, you know, kind of influenced the next generation of proper male superstars. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of that just came from, uh, obviously he was very active during world war two. He, he did a lot of like, uh, morale boosting with songs. Um, he was, uh, in 1948, he was, uh, declared the most admired man alive. Wow. Um, ahead, ahead of the Pope. Um, so this guy was, uh, this guy was popular and, uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of the movies were well received as well. Um, guy put in the work and, uh, White Christmas is, uh, this is this bit of, a. Uh, I know we usually say we record, we like listen to the original version of the album, but this one's a little of a weird situation. Where this album was is a compilation album that was originally released as "Merry Christmas" in 1945, um, but like just over the years, it's been like re-released and reissued and digital and like just kind of switched around. The, the, the version we're listening to is the 
White Christmas um, release of Merry Christmas. Um, that's the name of the album. Um, just because White Christmas is uh, the best-selling single of all time, 50 million copies. Uh, so that's pretty good. So yeah, there, there's like some weird, like this was like the rechanneled stereo version. So there, there, there's like just a, so many different versions of this particular album. I will say, uh, since we're talking about it now, as opposed to when we get down to it, I had to, I had to pull up, I was trying to pull up and see if he did a, a live recording of any of them. So if there was like, you could see the band in the background and on white Chris or um, on jingle bells, the version that I found on YouTube is higher quality than the one that was on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, there's so many different versions. Like the, obviously that most of these songs, um, it's a compilation album. So they weren't all made at the same time. But they're mostly all recorded between like 1940 and 1950, basically that decade. Um, so you got some like remasters that are a lot higher quality um, <laughs> than obviously the original version that recorded back in the 40s. Um, which this album's interesting because some of them are definitely higher quality, uh, I guess, remasters or reproductions uh, than others, uh, which we'll get into. Well, yeah, this the version, I, I think it was just probably... Uh a remaster of it because it was still the same vocal lines. It was just a little oh, yeah. crisper. It's not like it's a re-recording. It, these are all like original recordings. Um, just this is like a, got some, I guess, remastering going on. It's just a little difficult because it sounds like so popular. It's been around so long. Yeah. It's kind of been through the ringer in terms of like re-releases and, you know, every, every version of this album has been released. Uh, so we're just going with the Spotify White Christmas compilation version. 12 songs, 33 minutes and 38 seconds. Um, so I know that is a couple extra songs like tacked on to the end. Like in the original release, Christmas in uh, or Mila Kalikilaka wasn't in there. That's like later recorded, but that's not edited in here. So we are re- uh, listening to that. It's just the full package. It's Mila Kalikimaka, not Laka. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Tomato, tomato. I.e. I'm not good at pronouncing things. Let's see, I didn't even want to. I also want to say the other one, but that's uh, like an Irish name that I was going to mispronounce, anyways. <laughs> so, I, Christmas in Killarney. Yeah, yeah, Killarney. That was it. All right. Well, you, you want to just get on into it then with the first track? Let's do it. Uh, oh, hold on. I've got Bing too high up. I need to bring the song track <laughs> up so you can actually see what the song track is. Um, track number one Silent Night. Silent Night. Very uh, interesting songs to start this album off on. Uh, Got to admit, uh, a lot of Christmas songs are pretty fucking lame. It, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, Silent Night's never been my favorite Christmas song. It's like very sl- melodic, like just kind of, you know, it's melodic, but it's like so slow paced. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's got like a very sleepy backing choir. And, and you know, Bing's version obviously isn't any different. Um, yeah, is uh, I mean, if I'm gonna have to listen to any of them, I'd prefer to listen to this version, I guess. Um, well, so many uh versions of uh these Christmas songs, Bing's is like the standard or the default, yes. right? Um, which is funny since like when he recorded these songs in the 40s, um, they were Christmas standards, right? They were right. <laughs> old songs at the time Bing was recording them, so now you know, here we are, like 70, 80 years removed. Um, and his is kind of co-opted into becoming that new standard. Mm-hmm. And there's, I think the, the, one of the reasons that at least for me, I love the, these versions of the songs is there's just something about the way the vocals are recorded that I really love. I think it's, um, the analog microphones, but it just adds such a unique filter that makes voices sound so much better. It's like this nice little, I don't know, just a little bit crackly. You can hear something. Um, and I've not been able to find a vocal filter that mimics it very well. Yeah, I'm not going to say, like, better. I mean, it's certainly an aesthetic. Yeah. Um, well, it just, it fits, is what I mean. I mean, there's a certain, I mean, it's authenticity, because that's just the mistakes or, mm-hmm. I guess, the imperfections in that recording technology. Um, obviously, production nowadays is a lot more silky smooth, but, you know, you do lose that uh, that texture. Yeah, like why I have a... Uh... VHS camcorder upstairs. <laughs> I just like it. I like how it looks. 
Sam records about two hours of video logs before going to bed every night. Yeah, no. um, I will probably be bringing the, I might take the uh, camcorder home for Christmas. I think I want to record, record some stuff. Cause I recorded some stuff when you guys were here for last uh, new year's. I think I want to keep the, keep the tradition going on the same tape, you know? Anyway, back to the music. Um, the strings in, I will say, as much as I don't like Silent Night, the strings in this one are pretty good, but it's muddy, which it's 1945, so they get a pass. Cooper? No. Hey. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello? <Sam? laughs> Did you hear anything I just said? Cooper? Samuel, you there? Yeah, I'm I'm here. You're the one that's not here. Is my thing lighting up still? Yes, it is. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I jumped out there for a second. That or I lost you. No, I mean I I could hear you the whole time. Okay. Yeah, you want to say that again? <laughs> maybe your speakers are dying. No, what were you saying? Yeah, I was just saying this. The strings are really nice, but they're muddy. But it's 1945, so they get a pass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the production value, really, obviously, is, you know, they're lacking a lot of technologies, but you can't really blame a guy for recording in 1945. No, no, you cannot. Jim, do you can't him blame him for having a boring starting track, though. Yeah, yeah, Silent Nights. Well, remember, it's a, it's not. It's not album experience. It's just background noise. Is what okay, it is. it's a bo- it's still. <laughs> Jim do track number two, a real strong song to follow up that first one. I'm not even going to attempt to say this. It's um, oh come all you faithful, come uh, let us adore him in Italian or uh, yeah uh, Latin. I imagine Latin, <laughs> Italian, Latin, same thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, no famous Christmas Carol written way back in like. I believe it was written like in 1751. I believe it. Um, so it's an old song. Yeah, very old. It's got some age on it. But and this recording's got some age it, on it. It does, but they they got tubular bells in there. They got a full orchestra. Ooh, very nice. It's lacking in the slick production. It's definitely got the old timey charm, and yeah. I like the backing choir as well. But uh, it's, it's almost kind of front loaded with some of the slower songs. It's uh, just another shit Christmas song, honestly. This one gives me flashbacks to uh, church at Christmas time, and I swear this song would last ten minutes. They just the, there's the, like seven extra verses that they would just tack on. <laughs> oh, not, not yeah. Enjoyable. Bing's Bing's vocals on these songs right, don't really have. I, I think the warmth or I guess they're a little more like um, I don't know what's the term. Eulogistic. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Or funeral esque. Uh, um, I feel like, of I mean, it's the best version I've heard, but it's still it's just the issue of the bass song, right? Like I was saying before, in the the bubbly review, you can put icing on a shit cake, but it it doesn't change the fact it's shit cake. I mean, a song uh, coming out in seventeen fifty one. You know, it's not going to be the no. spring chicken it once no. was. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, I talk about it later, but. The church really fucking skimps when it comes to lyrics, right? From that time period. If there's a lyric, a song with lyrics in it, almost always garbage. But full orchestra, just a, a song that they commission, right? Because that's how it used to work. The The Catholic church would commission artists to um, write pieces. Uh, and that's like where a lot of Beethoven stuff comes from and Bach and all that jazz. Uh, that stuff is amazing. But as soon as you put vocals in there, it just turns to dog shit. I'm not sure what they really were skimping on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it stays true to the original, but uh, yeah. yeah, I don't have much care for it. Jump to um, track number three, then. But we can go to track number three, which is the title track, titular track, best-selling, si- best-selling single of all time. Yeah. Uh, wait, really? sorry, no. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. By Christmas. Hmm. Not the Drifters version? No, this is this. <laughs> no, this is the uh, 50 million copies. This is the signature single. Wow. Or I, mean, I guess song. I, I'm not sure if they had singles back then. but I prefer the Drifters version personally, but this is also a very good version. Yeah, I mean, the Drifters version has a lot more energy. 
Um, which, I mean, I guess it's like a pretty standard thing of like more modern takes of the songs have a lot more uh, modern. Did pizzazz when was the drifter? It. That was like the '60s, wasn't it, Cooper? Come on. <laughs> well, this was the '40s. There's 20 years removed. Let me, let me look up. Look, if, 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 if Michael Bublé can do sorry, it a was cover 1956, of Cooper. <laughs> it was yeah. like 10 years. 10, 15 years removed. <laughs> that's um, not much more modern. That's uh, 15 years is a lot. That is 15 true, years ago was uh, 2006. Two th- and that I'm feels like times. it's a fucking long ass time ago. Yeah, um, see? So you've got a point, but still. Yeah, I know, but this one's definitely got a little more of a cleaner production with classic beings, you know, crooning over a warm fireplace sound. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is what he does very... He ha- He's able to produce a very warm sound. Uh, he's got uh, such kind a of inviting. voice. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> like, he doesn't look like his voice should be that deep. He kind of looks like Tom Kenny. <laughs> he does slightly. Um... But I've I've got a picture for this one, Cooper. Oh, yeah. Because I, I my first thought when listening to this was a it's a shame that there's not going to be any more white Christmases. And if you look at the screen, <laughs> we have the average snow depth on Christmas Day in the top hundred cities of the world above thirty degrees latitude. As you can see from <laughs> Bing's time to <laughs> why, current day. Why, why are you showing this? This is depressing. Because <laughs> I saw it on Reddit today, and I'm no, like, yeah, that that get checks it out, out of with here. my Get experience. it out of here. This is not the Christmas scene. <laughs> I, I'm yep, just bringing yep. it attention. Enjoy the white Christmases while they last because uh, not really a thing anymore. I know for sure Stop. I haven't seen one in the past like five years. Get, get out of here. I don't want to think about the impending economical collapse e- of our world. E- e- yeah, I mean, yeah, economical it. collapse could happen too, but yeah. Just, I'm pretty uh, sure if the environment collapses, <laughs> it's going to affect the economy. <laughs> that's true. But yeah, uh, bye-bye white Christmas. So it was nice knowing you. So there, that's something to chew on, and that that top hundred cities is constant. It's not um, it's not changing. So those are the same hundred cities throughout. So that's a that's a fun little graphic. Don't worry, I've got a, a better graphic later. Don't please stop showing the depressing graphics. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the next graphic on the next song is really good. Oh wait, okay. no, it's uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh. It's on. It's on track number eight. We'll get there. Don't worry. It's it's a, it's a fun picture. Okay. But yeah, that's that's White Christmas. Yeah. We'll be. We'll have I to know if you're all to, uh, We need to slow this album down a bit. So let's go to track number four. <laughs> God rush you, merry gentlemen. God. They really front loaded this album. Yeah, they um, did. Which, to be fair, this is like the recompilations. Like they did some weird things with like the, I guess the uh, the track list. Um. So I'm not sure where they put these all on the A side, but this one's uh, got some serious uh, crust on it in terms of like the recording. I mean, it's it's performed very nicely. I love the woodwinds. I really there's a lot of woodwinds on this album, which I really like because usually if you got a full orchestra, you don't have the woodwinds, um, and they've specifically added those back in. Um, but it's just it's not a good song again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is just like, these are like old Christmas songs. Yeah. Um, which I guess have like, you know, the cultural uh, value, you know, they've been around for so long. It's kind of ingrained, but like they're pretty bare bones. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least God Rest You Merry Gentlemen has some good lyrics for him to sing. Unlike the next track, if you want to just go straight into that. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, track number four. Five, Faith Ugh, of Our Fathers, God. which is a 1849 Catholic hymn um, in memory of Catholic martyrs. I mean, there's that one um, choir guy in the background that's got a even deeper voice than Bing. I was listening to him. He was pretty good. The choir goes ham. Yeah, no, I mean, I like I like the, the choir. I like the kind of brass that pops up in this one. Uh, just all very slow. Yeah, the These lyrics. are slow songs. I mean, I mean, the lyrics are just like they, they really got hung up on being persecuted by the Romans before they became the main religion of the Roman Empire, didn't they? They're still going on about it. How many years later? Two thousand. I mean, at the time of this was released, this song was already a hundred years old. Yeah, 
Um, and, and the thing it's singing about before that is even older. Several <laughs> thousand. <laughs> like, come on. These are historical songs, yeah. Sam. Um, they weren't made for enjoyment. <laughs> they were made to convey information. <laughs> I mean, if you um, wrote a song today about something that happened 2,000 years ago, this is like, really? Like, come on. You're throwing it like a guitar solo. <laughs> Well, I guess that's what a uh, uh, just to give Bob Dylan some time, he'll work his way backwards from Murder Most Fun. <laughs> Every hundred years, Bob Dylan goes back. His songs get three minutes longer. <laughs> Man's gonna Launch be his pilot. In, Man's gonna be releasing eight and a half hour songs about the Neolithic Age. <laughs> God, I, there's some people out there thinking, "Don't threaten me with a good time." <laughs> Yeah, Bob Dylan. Um, <laughs> let's just move on from that one. Yeah, track number six, I'll Be Home for Christmas, uh, which is another slower song, I will say, but I think it's in a better vein uh, as opposed to some of the other ones. Yeah, but I don't know what you're talking about with the last one and the 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 t- the crust on it. This one was really tinny for me. It's like he forgot to turn the bass on, like he had a bass booster to make his voice sound deeper and he didn't turn it on for this one. It just seems really tinny for some reason. Yeah, this one has a little tin in it. Um, That's because he used a can on a string (laughs) to record the vocals. Uh, This is a Bing original, though. Um, This is this is not a cover song. This is one that uh, his the Christmas song. You know, there's always the one that they write that sticks, and this is it. Yeah, this is uh, originally to honor. Soldiers Overseas, because it was written in 1943, which, uh, yeah. you know, there, there's some stuff happening in the early 40s. I don't quite remember. Uh, Vietnam but... War, I believe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's when the moon war uh, was going on. Yeah. We were going to war against the moon. Uh, we did launch a lot, a lot of rockets at it. Um, but yeah, you know, given that it's a more quote unquote contemporary song, um, it's got a, a little more warmth to it. Like, I really like the Spanish guitar, guitar and what it adds to it. Mm-hmm. For me, a this little is more subtlety. I did an analytical breakdown of Christmas music. Because, <laughs> mm. um, it, it, again, it's not a favorite of mine, um, but it's it's just okay, right? Um, yeah. Like, it, the, it's this Christmas songs really break down when you just sit down and listen to them. I, I think a big part of the longevity of Christmas songs is the fact that they're always just used kind of as background music. Um, Cause even if I'm not a big fan of just sitting and listening to the song, you know, you put me in front of a crackling fire, it's snowing outside. I got a cup of hot, uh, hot chocolate in my hand. The song would be the best thing ever. Right. Because it's, it's all part of the environment. It's, it's moon music. Exactly. And I think additionally, a lot of nostalgia gets detached to these songs. So you associate it with that moment. And so it brings back those warm feelings. Um, when you hear it in the background, not when you sit and listen to it, when you sit and listen to it, you're like, this is a, uh, not as good as I thought it was. I think maybe it's like, you're not as complex. Cause I guess that's kind of the double edged sword, right? Yeah. Christmas songs aren't like considerably complex, uh, which helps them to kind of, you know, mold the background and be good view music. But, uh, not as like you know, not very good for dissection. Mm-hmm. Um, Move on to uh, next track then. Yes, next track, track number seven, "Jingle Bells." The, uh, the song that Bubbly was trying to do very poorly. <laughs> I mean, he was basically emulating the Andrew Sisters, uh, like note for note. Directly ripped it off. Is what he did. Well, some would say a tribute. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's more of a tribute than what he did with the Drifter's White Christmas version. That yeah, that one he did the actual audio. Um, yeah, this song's got a little more energy. It's got the very jingly bells going on in the back and the big band backing. Now, Cooper, and uh, I would like mm-hmm. to, I'd like point something out to you. What was that? That's not a jingle bell. Those aren't sleigh oh. bells. That's a single fucking handbell and a snare broom. I went. Oh. To the, I had. I went, This is what I was looking up when I went to YouTube to sh- see if I could find a live performance version of it to see if they were actually using, you know, the sleigh bells on a stick. Right. But if you if you open up, I found one that was like posted in 2012, and it's much more crisp. 
and it's just a single fucking hell bell, hand, handbell being rung, you know, like the, the, um, uh, fuck Salvation Army uses. That's what it is. It's not sleigh bells. Huh. It's just a bell. Yeah. It's just a single fucking bell. And it's really obvious too. And it's, once you realize that it sounds really off, you're like, what the hell? Why are they just using a, a single handbell? Why, why aren't they using the sleigh bell stick? But maybe that's know, all maybe, they had available. Maybe the sleigh bell <laughs> stick wasn't a thing. I don't know. I mean, surely in the 1940s, they had the technology to stick bells onto a stick. <laughs> Were sleigh bells a thing then? I wasn't alive. Were you alive? <laughs> I mean, no, but I, I mean, I imagine they had sleigh bells back when they were, had sleighs to bell. <laughs> they, they had jingle bells. Um, yeah, no, it's a fun song. I, I like the Andrew sisters. Um, like I said, I, I like they have like a little like oboe solo. Yeah, clarinet. That's, that's that's a really good woodwind solo. The I mean that whole band breakdown at one fifty is the best part of the song. I think it's oh it yeah. might be a clarinet. I'm not sure. It may be clarinets. I, I always get them mixed up. Um, but man, woodwinds are critically underutilized in music, except for saxophones. Saxophones used plenty. <laughs> Everyone likes saxophones. Um, yeah, that's Jingle Bells. So we can go to the next track if you're ready, Sam. Yeah, we can hop on over to track number eight. Track number Santa eight, Claus. Santa Claus is coming, coming, to, coming town. to town. A uh, 1934 song. Uh, another Bing classic that is kind of deep, sultry voice mixes with the female choir well on, or I guess the Andrew sisters in this case. Yeah, uh, I will say the implications of the song are kind of terrifying. Hopefully Santa can only see you when you're sleeping because that at least makes it half as terrifying. <laughs> well, but there's always been odd implications with the uh, Santa Claus. So, Man, I, I will say I really love the big band in this. It's just, ugh. It's just fantastic. And uh, this is the picture. If you look at the stream creeper, this is the picture that immediately came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about the big band <laughs> just these guys <laughs> freaking the fuck out about the sax solo man i mean it, it, nothing on the album goes whatever however hard that goes. <laughs> no um, like, that's I how i feel about room. big band that's a that they're they're listening to jazz so that's why they're so excited i mean i, I like to keep these uh podcasts at least semi pg but you have to admit those those three in the front are on the uh they are in the verge of climax. PG. What the hell are you talking about, Cooper? We, I mean, I guess I'm the one that curses a lot. I, I try not to curse. Oh, you know. I, this I is a Christmas constantly. stream. Yeah, whatever. But man, that, that guy in the middle, he's really enjoying that sax. I don't know. That guy on the far right seems to have... <laughs> he's arrived. The train's at the station if you get my drift. <laughs> I like the guy on the left. He's just screaming at him. <laughs> so excited. Uh, that's a good picture. I like that one. All right, that's the last picture I have. Sadly. No, but the, the the big band is quite nice. Oh, um, I love it. They add so much energy and like just fun to it. And you know, Bing lets them breathe. He lets them mm -hmm. have their big solos. Mm -hmm. And he has a good playoff with the Andrew Sisters as well. Oh, this yeah. isn't the Bing show on some of these songs. No, it is not. Um, and now Cooper, I know what you're thinking. Right, these last couple songs have been too energetic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's slow it down again. <laughs> Going into track number nine. Silver Bells. Yeah, Silver Bells is another Christmas song that I've never uh, Fuck me. particularly... No, no, I've never heard someone say, oh man, Silver Bells is on. Um, you know, I have heard though, somebody the other day said Little Drummer Boy is their favorite Christmas song. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, it's not the little, worst Christmas that's song. That's my least favorite Christmas song, personally. What? Come on. Yeah, this, bum, bum, this is probably my second least favorite. Um, that or First Noel. There's a lot of terrible Christmas songs. <laughs> All of them are just so old and slow. <laughs> I will say, again, First Noel, the Bing Crosby version, the best version, right? He it is defend he is definitive almost every time. Well, I would would you say this is the definitive Silver Bells cover? It is, but it's still terrible. <laughs> like I said, shit cake icing it doesn't solve anything. It's got you know, like, like a bit of a duet thing going on. Him and uh Carol Richards. Yeah, it's, um, it's that nice. we don't really see elsewhere. It's okay. It's... And the production's cleaner. Uh, I like the duet, but yeah, I kind of agree with it kind of being like, ugh. 
<laughs> some Christmas songs are just like a bit of a drag to get through. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh not good. Let's just move on. Um track number ten. Track number ten. It's, it's beginning, beginning to, to look, look a lot like Christmas. There you go. Uh, has like the most classic Christmas opener, right? This should have been little, track number one, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that little like like snowy orchestral opening before it goes into like Bing's vocals. Ugh, they yeah. transport me, Sam. Yeah, this is this is the like this is a classic. Um, I personally think this one probably gets played just about as much as uh, Mariah Carey's stuff, but I'm not sick of this one. Yeah, no, this one has just uh, easy going warmth to it. Um, like great uh, instrumentation, you know, pulls in and out as the song goes along. You know, mm. Bing's vocals and the instrumentation kind of trade focus. Um, it's got like legit song progression. But yeah, it's it feels like you're strolling through like a you know you're you're strolling through a Christmas tree farm. There's a little bit of snow on the ground, kind of bouncing, taking long strides, kind of stuff. It's very very relaxing. Kind of like the trade off, and like some parts of the chorus are taken over by the choir before mm-hmm. like Bing's vocals come back in. It feels very organic. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just a fantastic mix. Um, great b- big band, man. Love me some muted trumpet. It's great. Mm-hmm. Do you know they make tuba mutes? They make what mutes? Tuba mutes. Tuba mutes. How does so that'd be so big? They're, yeah, such a they're, large, they're large huge. <laughs> I don't even know what that sound like. I guess I'm muted tuba. Yeah, it's it's weird. But man, muted trumpet, just good. And then that ending, I always love the little. It kind of speeds up a little bit right at the end. Yeah, a little, little jolt of energy. Mm-hmm. It's very cheery. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then now we go on to the last two songs in the album. Track number eleven. Are uh, our, our, our ones that are, I guess, island songs technically. I... <laughs> Ireland's an island. I, Ireland is an island, I guess, but you don't ch- generally think about it in that way. Um, I'd never heard this one. Um, I didn't know it was Irish, but it didn't take me long to figure it out. <laughs> yes, it's a track number 11, Christmas in Killarney. Yeah, uh, Killarney. It's this Irish American song, um, which, uh, you know, it's exceedingly Irish, I guess, in terms yeah. of presentation. Yeah, very Irish. Um, I looked up not to subtle sure, on the... I'm, I looked up to make sure this wasn't the period of time when people were super racist to the Irish. And it looked like that ended a little bit before... Yeah, I think they're a little past that. It's still um, not great. But did you notice he's, he put on a little bit of an accent? He did put on a little bit of an accent. <laughs> I don't know if he was doing that on purpose. But... I mean, I'm sure he... I mean, he's singing an Irish song. I'm sure he's, you know... Playing it up a little bit. Um, it was just every not, once in a while I'm like, hmm, <laughs> that's a bit, hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I mean, Bean Cosby is, is part Irish. Yeah, um, listen, Cooper, that doesn't get you anywhere in not America. You go over, you go over to England and say, I'm part English and also part German. They say, get the fuck out of here. Um, I mean, I guess that makes it a little bit better. It's just the fact, if if you were to do it today, I probably wouldn't bat an eye, but it's just so close to that time period where they were really fucking racist to the Irish. It's like, well, you know, he's, he's part Irish. I mean, she's part Irish. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, incorporating into the popular culture. Yeah. You know, kind of celebrating that heritage. That's true. Yeah. I'm sure this song would have been released, say, 20 or 30 years earlier. Did you know the KKK actually were against the Irish? I mean, uh, you know, I'm just starting not to like those guys, Sam. <laughs> they, they look like bad news bears. Just, just another reason to hate them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really adds to the list. It's a long list. Because I, I looked at uh, it was on the Wikipedia page for Irish r- racism. There's a little <laughs> excerpt. There's a political comic that they had published about it. Um, and I was like, that uh, you know, you just when you think you couldn't like someone even less. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's all right. It's got some fun no, it's, it's, it's interesting and uh, uh, note progression. It's a bit too like uh, odd to be in like the regular Christmas rotation. Mm, I would say guess, so, or maybe like too steeped in like uh, like like it's very specific Irish sound. 
Um, nah, I think it's fine. I don't. I don't think anybody would bat an eye if you had this on a Christmas playlist rotation. I can raise an eyebrow too. I'm not sure if they'd say anything, but uh, I just don't think that people typically associate like the Irish sound with like a more Christmassy song. Well, speaking of something that's not traditionally associated, <laughs> that Christmas, is true. <laughs> uh, jump into the, track number twelve, Melikilikimaka, which is uh, Hawaiian. Yes, for Merry Christmas, as they say in the song. Um, and man, I really love this one. This one played a lot when I was a kid. Uh, this was on one of my parents' uh, Christmas playlists or something on the the disc. You know, back back in my day, all the Christmas playlists were on discs, and you bought them oh, from the store. On my eight track. Oh, um, <laughs> we have we have a fancy system in their house where you can put a disc in upstairs and it plays in speakers downstairs. <laughs> They're hardwired through the walls. Because wow, <laughs> <laughs> what's what's a wire? What's a wall? <laughs> All my walls are electronic now. Yeah, but like I said, this is, maybe it's I I really love the vocals. It's got they've got fun swings in them, and I think I think part of the reason I like the song so much is probably the nostalgia factor. Cause I associate it with, you know, that family Christmas atmosphere. Um, and there's also the possibility that, uh, the other reason I like it so much is sitting at home and it's 15 degrees outside and they're talking about it being green and bright. Warm. And I want it to be warm. <laughs> and you know, 15 years later, I got my wish. It is now 60 degrees at the start of December. <laughs> Monkeys, paws, closes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks, child. No, Sam. Uh, you caused fucking global warming. <laughs> no, I like. Uh, yeah, no, the song obviously uh, intentionally kind of plays up the fact that you know Hawaii is not typically you know what you picture when you picture Christmas, right? It's no. n- never really cold there. He's got palm trees. I will say, I think but, they got more snow so far this year than Indiana has. That I don't believe. There was a blizzard warning there at the beginning of the really. Month, well, probably on like the mountains. Yeah, yeah, for the mountains. But I texted Malia and she she said uh she was having to wear sweaters everywhere. Granted, it could have been 75 for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a good gauge. It's not, but I, I like to think that it was snowing. But man, again, with the big band, that there's that hot breakdown at 125 with that tropical chord swipe every once in a while. I don't know how else to describe it. It's, you know, they play the chord and then they've got the little um, tube ring thing on their hand that they slide up the uh up the fret board i don't play guitar i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> i don't either so i'd also know um but it's yeah, no, nice. it's, a, it's a it's a hard to dislike song mm-hmm. um it's easy going um now i'm gonna say with some certainty that i don't think being as hawaiian uh no. well, luckily he doesn't try to do an accent on this one no that so. would have been that would have been bad uh, but he he doesn't so it's okay Yeah, that's the end of this album. That's that's the end. It's a tight thirty three minutes. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty short, but you know, this is the some something that you you put on, you just have it looping. Excuse me, and you just kind of let let it play the night away, if you will. And I will. So, Cooper, what would you say your least favorite song on this album is? I mean, I'd probably have to go with, like, something in the top half. Like, Silent Night or um, Oh Come All Ye Faithful. Um, They're just so slow. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, they're pretty slow. Like, like just trudging along. Um, I know, I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. They're Christmas classics. They've been a long, long time. That, that this makes me really like them as like songs, um, very much. Just you know, <laughs> they got history, but you know, I'm not going to be sitting down stuff my fingers to any of these. Mm-hmm. And you, Sam? Oh, my least favorite is probably Silver Bells. Just I, it, it's it's so slow. It's it's honestly slower than the rest of them. And there's not anything interesting vocally going on to like latch on to. Cause like at least with come all you faithful, he does, he's very grandoise, grandiose in his grandoise. Fuck me. Um, <laughs> grandiose in his uh, delivery of some of the lines, but in silver bells, it's just kind of sleepy. Did you know that Bing Cosby's favorite color is turquoise? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 
No, yeah, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. You can tell I learned that word by reading it since I pronounce it wrong <laughs> constantly. There's a lot of words like that where I, I, I've read them and come up with a pronunciation in my head and it's just flat wrong. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I completely do the same thing. I'm sure whenever I read <laughs> Grandiose on <laughs> written, I always think Grandoise as well. Grandoise. That's a good Pokemon. Um, Stupid. What about your favorite song, Cooper? What's your favorite song? I don't know. I think my favorite's got to be It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas. It's a good one. It's like just just a classic Christmas song. So warm, so firesidey. It's that perfect balance between Bing's voice and like the instrumentation. Um, and the choir picks up. It's got good song progression. Just all around solid Christmas banger. And uh, you, Sam? Uh, it's it's a tie for me with It's Beginning to Look lo- a Lot Like Christmas and uh, Melikliki Maka. Just because uh, there's, I've got a lot of history with that one, so I really enjoy it. Uh, it's just so fun, and it's one of the few <laughs> faster ones. <laughs> a little more pep and in the step, huh? I, I think it's got to be Melikaliki Maka because that big band, man. It's got to be one of the big band songs. It's just so good. Well, that was White. Oh wait, what am I doing? We got to do that. Are we gonna rate it or? I, rate it. Sorry. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm ready to go. I want to be done. Bing's uh, unrateable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't remember who did the rating last time. Oh crap! Bing covers it up. Uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's just shift him over a little bit, I guess. Whoops. There, that's that's good enough. Um, I don't remember who did it last time. Coop, do you? Uh, I can I can take it this time. Yeah, because so, so so here on uh, oh, don't have too much energy there, Sam. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Now here at uh, the auto shop, you know, we have celebrated Christmas in our cars every year since we've been alive. Mm-hmm. Um, which you're probably wondering, what does it mean to celebrate your Christmas in a car? Uh, I mean, we'll be out in the cold, in the snow sometimes, uh, with the car running, uh, eating whatever food we were able to grab from the local Arby's dumpster, and uh, eating Christmas in our, in our car run, uh, underneath a uh, highway passageway. Well, don't forget um, the year we cooked the turkey on the engine. Yeah, we cooked the turkey on the engine. Um, uh, we went through a lot of gas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ever seen somebody get up to <laughs> ten thousand RPM in neutral? <laughs> <laughs> Look, we had to, we didn't want to get food poisoning. It's very important. Um, no, so that that's why we have our rating being a uh, car theme. So at the tip to talk, you can see the the rating of showroom. This is the best of the best. Show it to you and all your friends. This is something you just gotta listen to and listen to again. Cream of the and crop. At the very right bottom, cream of the crop. And at the very bottom, you have the bottom of the barrel. You know, this is the this is crap here. This is you don't want to touch it. This is just this is uh just leave it in the garbage where it belongs. Physically and then we'll have like yes, just, just physically painful. And then we have different ratings in between there. We might give it a high or low. Um, so Sam, what would you rate Bing Crosby's White Christmas? Ooh, I'm going to give it, I guess, just straight, straight middle of the road. Uh, probably, probably a high fixer upper, honestly. Um, it, it's, it's like we talked about last time. It's difficult to rate these because if I, when I'm at home and my parents say, Hey, what Christmas music should we just throw on in the background? I'd probably say, put this album on, uh, because it's, it's great for that use but if you're sitting and listen to it it kind of breaks down so that kind of i guess this is why we haven't gone into reviewing game soundtracks excuse me or movie soundtracks because it's very situational dependent they have different uh functional purposes yeah and it's kind of odd with this kind of stuff where it's it is just straight music but it has a functional purpose in real life you know what i'm saying um, like we're not going to sit down and review ice cream truck music, right? <laughs> it's kind of, kind of not exactly the same situation, but if we were just going straight, like if, if I was sitting at home in front of the Christmas tree, you know, dog in my lap, just relaxing, this would probably be a high, like new, um, but just it, listening to it in this way. It's a fixer upper just because it's not a very good listening experience <laughs> sitting and staring at the screen, typing things while having it play in your ears. Um, 
So it's kind of it's kind of a weird one. What about you, Coop? Yeah, I think I also have to give it a fixer upper. Um, I, I mean, for the same reasons you said, but also just uh, the first half of this album's really slow. Yeah, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of just like skippable songs. But then like that half comes nighttime in. songs though. Like it's it's really dark outside. You're getting ready for bed. You so you put on faith it. of our fathers. <laughs> I mean, you're you're just having a quiet conversation with your family. You don't want to have Medley Kaliki Maka in the background, right? Yeah. They serve yeah, their purpose, not, but Yeah, I don't I don't listen to Sil- a Silent Night. Yeah, just... <laughs> uh but the back half's got so many bangers on it, like Christmas staples. Bangers. <laughs> Man, dude, it's I'm, beginning to look a lot like Christmas is a real banger. Yeah, being in the club. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw it down to Crosby. Um No, it's uh You know what I mean? A little more high energy, you know, something that's a little more fun to listen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so you know, yeah, not not very uh maybe not made to listen through all the way, but you know, it's got recognizable songs, songs you're gonna like. Uh so I can't like say it's bad, but I also can't really say it's like you should listen to it. So middle of the road, fixer upper. That's fair. That's fair. I think that means that we've listened to our fair share of Christmas music for the year, Sam. I think it means, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, so that's, that's it. We're, we got to move on now to, um, the spare tire. That's the end of the Christmas reviews. Spare tires, just whatever else we've been listening to this week. Um, so, what have you been listening to, Cooper? Since mine is just more over the garden wall, electric light orchestra, and um, my chilling playlist. Yeah, still been in a pretty uh, kind of reflective mood all of December. I've listened to a little bit of uh, Arca um, recently. Very interesting, uh, kind of contemporary. You know, pushing the boundary of like club music and rigatone, and like just like a very like forward thinking pop artist hmm. pushes sonic boundaries. Uh, not going to be to everyone's taste, but uh, sometimes I'll, I, I, I like some different stuff. Um, and she released uh, like four albums this year. <laughs> so, wow. All at the same time. Um, it's a lot of albums. Yeah. So, been listening my way through those, and uh, yeah, so not quite Christmassy albums, I will say. You're not gonna put this on for grandma, but <laughs> certainly interesting listens. Oh, what's this music, young man? Grandma, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but beyond that, you know, it's kind of been a little reflective. Listen to a lot of uh, stuff I'm listening to throughout the year, and uh, yeah. Looking forward to new music in 2022. Well, that's fun. Yeah, the, the other thing is uh, listening to way too much Tom Cardi. Way too much Tom Cardi. That meme guy. Sam about. will find a YouTuber that makes like one minute meme music. This is and, a, uh, no, no. The one that <laughs> the one that ruined me this week was um um artificial intelligence it's like a it's three and a half minute song it's like it's a proper okay. song okay okay it's a proper song um but holy crap like it was the like you know the the meme where like there's nothing going on in your head it was just that song on loop i couldn't think anything else it was actually really really disturbing um so when i was like <laughs> sitting doing work, at work i just have that song looped I'd listen. I listened to it like fifteen times in a row. You make it sound like cursed. <laughs> it was pretty cursed. Like I couldn't. That was the only thoughts in my head. It was messed up, man. Yeah. I shouldn't call it meme music. It's a, uh, you know, weird, weird Al's music. It's it's funnier, but it's still got good production. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was just. It's really good, but man, it it ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. It's not like you like like did a drug or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what was going on with me. Hey man, do you got any uh, scratching your neck? You got any more of them keyboard solos? <laughs> I honestly, it's probably his use of um, vocoder. Vocoder. I think that's what it is. You're you're a sucker for it. I'm just such a sucker for it. It's so good. 
Well, that's 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 the end, I think. Uh, if you've liked what you heard, you can scroll down on the uh, the Twitch and you can see the archive on YouTube. There's that big old picture of Jeff Lynn. Click on that. You'll see all our past episodes besides the one that we did for Super Tramp. And you can go ahead and listen to them there. And if you want to uh, leave a suggestion, there's a suggestion box. And if you're listening on YouTube and you want to listen to us live, you can come on over to Twitch uh sunday nights at 8 p.m eastern 7 p.m central uh wait uh shit i don't remember yes, um, <laughs> if you're eastern, seven, central's always one hour behind eastern yeah i always forget um what do you mean you always <laughs> you, you live in Indiana. i don't live there. Got, <laughs> i know my times i don't know that time mm. um and uh what about what about the twitter cooper um, you can find us. Uh, Sam recently changed it for some some reason. Uh, he, he just couldn't stand the numbers. For some reason, uh, which actually on, reminds uh, you on the Twitch page though, it still says up at Audio Shop fourteen. Well, that's a that's a, gonna be a dead link. Um, if you click it. It says this account does not exist. Whoops. Yes, so I'll have to update that. that yeah. So it's not at Audio Shop fourteen anymore. The uh, tag the uh, handle's been updated to at Audio Shop Pod. Um, so uh, we, if you want to drop us a follow there, we'll let you know what we're listening to and when we're listening to it and uh, keep you ahead of the game. And there you go. That's it. So thank you all so much for listening. And we will yeah, this see will, you uh, next year. This yeah, is going to be the last uh, the last episode of the year. And uh, I imagine next episode will be our year in review, 2021. Yeah. So hopefully we'll catch you then. See you later, shoppies. See ya.